guys, it's the War Fox or Robert J. Arnold or whatever you want to call me. Episode one of my first show, right? The War Fox Bagua show. And today we're really just talking about how to get your kids into martial arts. Uh, it's actually a very uh, talked about discussion over here in, in Asia because there are many masters that have attempted uh, to get their children into martial arts so they can pass their art on and therefore the lineage can continue to succeed. But without the child's interest into that art, then basically you're talking about a lost art unless they're lucky enough to find some kind of, you know, strange foreigner like myself to take over, right? And so how do I get my kids into martial arts? Um, there are really, I would say, three major aspects to um, making them not just do it, you know, and practice it because you can force them to do something, but anything that is forced is naturally going to just, it's going to dissipate really soon. So what you have to do is, is one, yourself, take a good look at yourself. How are you training your martial art? Are you training it all the time? Are you training it in a way that the ch children themselves are going to be able to see you uh, practicing? You know, my kids see me practice, right? They see me wake up, get up, I go practice or I go teach, you know, every day. And that creates in itself a curiosity. It's, it's an understanding that, okay, our family is basically about martial arts, or at least dad is, you know? And kids always want to do what dad is doing. So the first thing I'd say is make sure that, you know, you get into yourself enough, into your art, that you know you're making sure that you push yourself because no matter what you say it's not going to be as more important than what you do what you do all the time that's what your kids are going to get into uh i think the next thing about that this this uh connected to it is when you're training them you have two different you know focal points you have one they have to learn the movements they have to learn the techniques in, in deep detail which means whatever it is, it's the forms and of course the applications because really martial arts to me, in my own opinion, the only thing it is is about protection. First off, you can use it for many other things, but if it's not about protection, then I don't know what you're doing. You know, I mean, I can use martial arts to teach dance and I have, I can use it to help me write raps and I do. I can use it for lots of many aspects, but the, the reality is, is that martial arts, if you cannot defend yourself uh, realistically, then you're putting yourself in a bad situation. So the kids, they have to get those fundamental basics where they practice, you know, and go into detail through the movements. Now, in my own personal, right, journey, I have 2,000, more than 2,000 movements that I need to pass on to the kids before they're 16 years old, right? When they're 16, that's basically like when I say you're able to drive a car, and that means you're basically able to drive the lineage of the style. Now, um, so I have to, you know, be meticulous about how I teach each movement, but that in itself can be a little bit dry and boring, right? You know, I mean, they're kids. So that, like, so I give them the basic techniques of what they need to practice for maybe, a, I don't know, a half hour, right? And then we go into the, the part that they like, which is toys. Oh my gosh, toys, toys, toys. Man, uh, they say that you can turn everything, you know, if you're a really accomplished martial artist, you can turn anything into a weapon. And I, I believe that toys, they are weapons of joy. You can really, you know, if you just go shopping and look around and see what kind of exercises you can, you can make out of different things. And I'm telling you, those kids are really going to get into it because they love toys. And honestly, you should like toys too. If you don't like toys, I don't know what you're doing, right? You should, you know, but... Toys are very effective uh, training tools. You can use them, you know, ones that shoot, you know, boomerangs that throw, uh, everything like that. Uh, once you get those toys, you know, into the game for the kids, you know, they're gonna perk up and get all excited about it. And you're still making them use uh, the techniques that they have already practiced. So in addition to, you know, doing like, you know, the, the forms and the, the pad work where they gotta do that, uh, the sparring where they do that, then you just go out and you just say, okay, do whatever you can to survive, don't get hit. And just go go to town on them. 
right? Go to town on them, shoot at them, see what they can do. And they're going to start getting excited about it because they can see like, wow, all these movements that I'm practicing, you know, lets me become more effective at, at playing, right? And so that's the next part of it. So once they have the, the, the mechanics and then you give them the joy, well, not, you're, you're most of the way there. Uh, the last thing I would have to say, uh, and probably the most important, is the, is the environment. See, in my kids, you know, I've created a martial arts environment. So we play martial arts games. You know, when you know they see all of my weapons, I let them play with my weapons. I let them touch my weapons. You know, uh, at this point now, you know, they started when they were three years old, two years old. I was already letting them touch my weapons so that they could understand that this is what we do in our family and I trust you. Uh, if you don't give them that trust, then you're really gonna have a hard time turning that corner uh, later on. I don't believe in giving kids weapons when they're 16 and 17 because at that point, it's already a foreign object to them. I feel like they should have been uh, surrounded with it the entire time. Uh, they should know uh, how to be responsible with it and respectful with it. So, you know, the, by creating an environment where they can see all the weapons, they can see, you know, you go to, you watch uh, Kung Fu shows with them. You discuss different techniques with them. If you if you find a cool video, you know, on YouTube where somebody, you know, is doing something, whether it's a form or somebody's in a real fight, you show it to them, you get excited. You're like, hey, yo, look what I found, right? And that becomes normal. It becomes the new normal for them. So like, you know, I mean, like I threaten my kids by talking about making them play basketball. You know, I'm just like, I'm like, hey, you keep doing that. You know, I'm not gonna teach you martial arts. I'm gonna make you play basketball. And he's like, no, daddy, not basketball, no. You know, they cry about it because they understand what the family is. They understand that that's what we're about. And it's not that basketball is bad. And you can, uh, you can use this with anything. It doesn't have to be just with martial arts. But the point is, is that if you spend more time with them because you're training them, because you're watching TV with them, because you're, you know, watching the cartoons, you know, you watch cartoons they like to watch, you find, you find, you know, cartoons that have some uh, element of a martial, at least understanding inside of them. And they're going to be really quick to jump on the bandwagon. In fact, right now, my kids, you know, they beg me to train when, uh, when I feel like resting and relaxing. They're like, hey, let's go train. I'm like, oh. All right, man, let's go, you know, because it's, it, we all, we're all in it together. We're all part of the same team and they don't have to be successors of the lineage like I am. They don't have to pass on the entire lineage. I, I don't put that burden onto them. I don't give them any pressure about it. I think uh, pressure is definitely going to make them go the opposite direction. My one concern is to make sure they can completely defend themselves, right? And if they can completely defend themselves, then good. And, uh, and if they want to later on, you know, get to a point where they feel like they want to pass on the entire, you know, uh, lineage of, of Bagua or martial arts or your, whatever your style is, right? Then that's cool. Uh, if not, you know, God will provide. There'll be some other, you know, uh, way that I can, you know, get these things done. Um, but I, I have I have a pretty good confidence that right now that that's, that's really what they're interested in because that's what daddy's interested in. And, you know, they're interested in what I do all the time because, you know, I'm honestly just a mysterious motherfucker, man. And that just, that makes people want to draw to me, you know, whether it's kids or women or whatever. Oh, hey, I should have said that. Erase that last, I, I'm deleting that part. I'm, that's not going to be in the video. So, yeah, just a, a few tips on how to keep kids training and, uh, you know, have fun with it. Create the environment, you know, get them into real stuff, right? And, and, and enjoy. You, if you're enjoying it, they're enjoying it. Uh, all right, man. Uh, God bless you, and I'll, I'll see you for the next show. Peace. If you haven't already, you can go to Amazon, purchase my book, and follow my life story, or read the exciting novel based on all the styles in my lineage. Also, there's my online training program. Anyone can join anytime. It will eventually evolve all the techniques of my style. 